We just left off with warping everything to a standardized space. So now we have clean data that's removed all the effects of no interest. It's been warped to a standardized space. And now we can select a voxel that we want, either based on some coordinate that looks interesting or some a priori hypothesis about why some region of the brain should be connected with another region of the brain, or it could be exploratory, whatever. In this case, even though this task is uh, the AFNI sample data set where they just saw visual and auditory stimuli, I'm just going to select a voxel from one of the motor cortices in the brain and see where that correlates with every other voxel in the brain. So right now what we're going to do is we are going to select one of those voxels. And here I already have one picked out. I'm going to jump to XYZ and I'm going to select X20, Y19, and Z of 53. So that's roughly in the uh, pre-central gyrus. It's roughly in you know, province area four, it's roughly in where we'd expect some motor activity to be. Now, in this case, they weren't really making any button presses, so it's not as though I'd expect a strong correlation between that and, say, another motor-related region of the brain, but it makes sense to believe that, you know, if there is going to be any functional connectivity, it should be with other motor-related areas and not, say, with frontal areas or a bit. Well, it could be, but in this case, I'm not going to assume that. So I've gone right there. That seems to be where I want it to be. So here, what we're going to do is actually extract time series from that location. We can do that with 3D mask dump. Okay, This just extracts data from uh, an underlying voxel. And no IJK, because we don't want the coordinates to be spit out as well. And D box, we are going to give it the coordinates x of 20, y of 19, and z of 53. Make sure that these coordinates are what you jump to with the x, y, z. They're not always going to be the same thing you see in the upper left pane of the AFNI viewer. Now that's something, it's a topic for another discussion, but just be aware of that. And we are going to give it this, uh, let's see here, epi subject 01 as an input. And we're going to redirect it to an ideal file, ideal file.1D. So there it goes. And notice the first thing about this ideal file is that it's just in one row. Okay, For our functional connectivity analysis to work, we need to do 1D transpose to make it one column. So ideal file, we're going to call this left motor ideal.1D. Okay, So it just replaces this, or doesn't replace the file, but just transposes it and puts it into the left motor ideal.1D. Let's check it out just to make sure it looks good, and it does. So we have that, and now we're ready to actually run the functional connectivity analysis. This uses a, a command called 3D FIM plus, and the input is going to be that epi subject of one image. Uh, pull lord, let's get rid of everything you know, to cubic. And for the ideal file, we're going to use that recently generated left motor ideal.1D file. We can output a bunch of different types of data or a bunch of different types of statistics. In this case, let's just output the correlation and see the help file for other types of data that you can output. And the bucket is going to be called core score subject 01. So hit that. It takes a few seconds to process. And now we have our correlation map. Okay, so if you want to do this a little bit quicker, go to define data mode or scan this as a data set to our overlay, which we can then choose. Scroll to the very bottom and select core underscore subject 1D. Great. So now what we have in this slider right here, also make sure the overlay is on, is correlation threshold. Okay, So make sure that this magnitude is at zero because if you go above one, then obviously you can't have a correlation greater than one. So right now it's at 0 0.5 and we're going to lower it a little bit. And as we do to about 0.3 or so, you see that there does appear to be some correlation, little you know, scattered stuff on the, the right side of the brain. A lot of stuff in the immediate vicinity of the seed region that we chose, which is also not surprising, given that a voxel will have a similar time course to a degree as its neighbors. Let's click on Clusterize to make this a little bit nicer. And click on Report. We have two voxels of 48. One on the left, one on the right. You know, one's a little bit more post-central, I'd say. But the idea is this correlation map reveals that there does seem to be some bilateral symmetry in the time courses for that seed region. So that's what a functional connectivity map looks like.
it's just now a quantitative measure of how well these time courses in each voxel are correlated. We took our seed region and it's done that at every other voxel in the brain. We've overlaid them on top of each other and we've calculated how good is the correlation between those two. In the next and last video of this simple functional connectivity correlation series, we're going to talk about converting those correlation coefficients into z-scores which are more appropriate for doing higher level analyses.